Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dorian. Thanks for tuning in to Dot Slash. So I was going to do a video on something else, but I thought, you know what? I've, I've been away the last two weekends, so I haven't had a lot of time. I've been using Silver Blue on hardware for the last two weeks, so I thought this is a good opportunity to do an update video and show you how well things have been working. If you haven't seen my first video on Silver Blue, I'll put a link up in the top corner. You can go check that out just so you know what I'm talking about, because I'm going to be referencing that quite a bit. So what's happened so far, uh, I did some partitioning. There's some partition stuff and hard drive stuff I want to talk about too. I had it in here, had a little space. I did a ton of experimenting. I did a ton of installing, trying to thrash it. And then I decided I needed more space. So I actually got rid of Ubuntu 16.04 completely, which is huge for me because I was holding on to it for a long time. But anyways, I got rid of it and I stuck Fedora here, gave myself a lot of space. And one thing about hard drives, this is a one terabyte mechanical drive. I will say that Fedora Silver Blue benefits greatly from an SSD on my other machine, which I call Scrappy. I have an SSD. It is an older system. Let me just bring it up here. It's scrappy it's my old uh core 2 quad it's a 10 year old computer with an ssd it reboots faster than my production machine which is pretty well specced but it's all about ssd now i don't mean day-to-day -day usage i just mean when you do the full system update and reboot now the difference here isn't huge either it takes me maybe 20 to 40 seconds to reboot with my mechanical drive and it takes five to ten seconds to reboot with my ssd now the reason for that is how the updates work and this also sort of rolls into some of the questions i had about hard drive space uh, a lot of the comments were about how if you have all these layers of the operating system it's going to take a ton of hard drive space well it's not perhaps in the graphics i did in the last video it wasn't too clear, I should have made it more clear, but you start with your base OS layer, all your files on your hard drive. When you get an update, which puts a new layer on, that new layer only has the upgraded packages, only the files that have been changed or deleted or removed or whatnot. You're only downloading changes. So think of it as GitHub for your operating system. So you're not downloading an entire image of the operating system with each layer. The default is that it will keep your current one, of course, and the previous one. This way you can always roll back. If you're doing an upgrade, you'll see by doing RPM OS tree status up here, you'll see this dot will be in the middle one because the one above it will be when you reboot, it will become the one that you boot into. I explained that in the last video. So now you're probably wondering, why do I have three if it only supports keeping yours and the last one? Well, you can see here, pinned yes. You can pin these layers, so it will keep them forever. And you do that by going sudo OS tree admin pin, let's say, one. Now, what does the number mean? The number starts with zero from the top of your deployment layers, your deployments, your, your OS layers of OS tree. So this will be zero. This will be one. This will be, sorry, <laughs> this will be two. So I want to pin one, which is this one. So we're going to do that. Enter in your password and now it's pinned. So let me just clear this, look at it again. And you'll see this is zero, this is one, the one that we just pinned, and then this one is the one that I pinned previously. So it will keep these two layers forever until I unpin them. So I can always roll back to them. And now if you want to unpin it, it's the same command, except you're gonna add dash dash unpin. The deployment is now unpinned, which means it can be merged and purged later on when you're rebooting. One thing I did with my production machine, I'll just go here and RPM OS tree status. If you look down here at the very bottom, this image, and let me zoom it in, 
this image at the bottom here is pinned. This is the very first install that I did. This was when I reinstalled it the second time after I got rid of Ubuntu. So as soon as it was installed, before there were any updates, I pinned it. That way I could always roll back all the way back to my first installation image without having to reinstall. This basically would be like reinstalling, but keeping all my files. So I think that's pretty handy. And by keeping all my files, I mean, I can roll back to previous versions. I can roll all the way back to my initial installation and everything that's in my home folder, all my downloads, my music and my videos and everything will stay because while the operating system is read only, your home folders are read write. So whatever files you create in your home folders will be there. Even if you roll back, it's not like rolling back a snapshot of the operating system. So you can also see further up in the layers, I have things like VirtualBox and Steam. Well, why do I have those installed as package layers and not flat packs? VirtualBox cannot be installed as a flat pack. It has to be installed as a package layer on the operating system side so that it can access the hardware and everything properly. As a flat pack, it just can't do that. That explains VirtualBox. Steam. Steam, you don't really have to. On my scrappy machine, I have Steam in here installed as a flat pack because I could just open it up and run it and no big deal. On my production machine, I have the NVIDIA Optimus dual hybrid GPU where I have the Intel and the NVIDIA GPU. In order for Steam to be able to use the OptiRun command, it has to be installed on the system because the Steam flat pack can't access OptiRun. Install it with OS tree and then it's no problem. Although I did have to install some copper repositories and whatever to get it working. But as you can see, I'm able to run GLX um, spheres in both the Intel GPU and the Nvidia GPU at the same time to show that it's working. If there's some interest in how to get this up and running with Optimus, I'll do a video on that separately. But if you don't run NVIDIA Optimus, then don't even worry about it. As for everything else, it's running very well. I'm actually using OBS right now on this machine using Silverblue. And I'm actually editing videos in KDEN Live in Silverblue. These are flat packs. And now you're probably wondering, how is he editing a video that he's still recording? How? But anyways, yes, so I'm... I'm quite happy with everything, how it works. And I want to show you as well that if you're not a fan of GNOME, let's log out, log out. I showed you in the previous video that I was able to install and use Cinnamon, no problem. Well, you can also install Plasma. So Plasma is quite basic. It has the system settings. It doesn't have all the KDE apps. You can install all those separately, but everything works as it should. So if you're a Plasma fan, it's just a matter of installing it using sudo rpm os tree install Plasma desktop. And this will install Plasma on your machine. Or if you want Cinnamon, Cinnamon. I haven't tried any others, but go ahead, give it a try, see if it works. Lastly, I just want to show you really quick that there was a trick that I had to do in order to get Silverblue to install properly with EFI. So this is my EFI system partition way at the end here. It does not like to play with other distros. The install will fail. If it's on a BIOS system, it installs no problem. If it's on a UEFI system, it's a little pickier. So basically all you have to do is trick it. I created another FAT32 partition. Just make sure the flags for ESP are not set. Otherwise it will mess up your other one. And you also have to give it a boot partition. So one gig boot partition, one gig boot slash EFI partition, and then the LVM group. And the great thing about LVM is I can add another group here. I can add another group there and I can make them all act as one and it'll be completely seamless in the system. It's really nice. 
So that's just my little update. I uh, hope you guys gave it a try. It works really well as a production machine and I'm using it for Telegram. I use it for, I'm using it for everything right now. I used to use Manjaro and I started using Arch and I also use Q4OS, but I've been using straight silver blue and nothing else for a while now. And I'm pretty happy with it. So if you guys have any other questions, I'm going to do another video more on OS tree specifically. Uh, more details on how to do things and not not touch on other things so much and another one on toolbox as well let me know if you've tried it let me know if it's interesting to you i hope i answered all the questions uh those are the common ones using lots of disk space oh and all the rebooting all the rebooting is temporary as i keep saying there is a way to do stuff without rebooting it is with sudo rpm os tree i apologize for that loud beeping os tree ex live fs so this is going to ask me to enter the best <laughs> command line option ever you have to add this at the end i i like danger in order for it to go ahead this is a warning telling you that it's currently considered dangerous. It's experimental. This will keep you from needing to reboot. But again, it's very experimental. So don't install VirtualBox and then try this. Something simple like I used it to install FFmpeg libs and I did this and it worked. But you know what? It's not that bad. You don't have to reboot all the time. My first video I rebooted. I don't know how many times, but it's because I rebooted after everything I did, which is unnecessary. You can do one thing after another, after another, and then do one reboot after, and it's the same thing. You can do upgrades, you can install packages individually, and then reboot. It doesn't matter. It will lump them all together onto your next reboot. I do have an SSD, so I'm gonna swap out this one terabyte for the one terabyte SSD, but it's gonna take a long time to copy all my stuff over to the SSD and swap it out of the machine. I'm not in a huge hurry. It's summertime. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying your summer. I am. And I hope you enjoyed this little update. Click that like button if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. And if you'd like to help me contribute to the Linux community, head on over to patreon.com slash dorian.slash. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bash on.